Oh, Amy Truesdale, welcome to the Flexibility Focus podcast. It's great to have you on. Thank you for inviting me. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, excellent. So obviously you and I go back quite a bit, but for people who aren't familiar with you, could you tell the audience a bit about you and how you first got started in martial arts? Yeah, so I started Taekwondo. It was just my local Taekwondo club at the local leisure centre, and that was a very long time ago. It was actually 97 in February. Um, so the reason why I started martial arts at the time, I was doing ballet dancing, tap dancing, I was swimming. Yeah. And my parents just thought, um, having two daughters, myself and my sister Chloe, they just thought it would be a valuable life skill to take part in martial arts. So we went along to um, my local club and I literally fell in love with it after the first session. So um, yeah, it all started from there really. Yeah, brilliant. Could you tell us about some of the achievements you've had in the sport? Um, obviously, you've collected quite a few trophies and medals along the way. Could you just give us a highlight of some of them? Um, yeah, sure. So um, I first started with the THB, which is like a semi-contact um, ITF sort of style taekwondo. Um, I became world champion in the ladies black belt division there. Um, so that was the highest level I got to. I also got international fighter of the year. I got best in grading. So I pretty much got majority of the um, awards I could with the TAGB. Yeah. Um, and then I've transferred over to the WT now. Um, so yeah, I've, again, I've won world champion in the Paris style. Yeah. I've also been European champion four times and I am currently ranked number one in the world for my division. So yeah, yeah have done too bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing pretty well. Um, could you tell us some of the, the main differences between the, the Olympic style of Taekwondo and, and the Paralympic? Because there are some differences, aren't there? Yeah, there is. Um, everything is pretty much the same. So the round times are exactly the same. You do three rounds, you fight for two minutes. Um, in the Olympic style, they can obviously do headshots, they can kick to the face. But in para Taekwondo, we don't actually have that. So you can kick anywhere to the body, but if you kick to the head, um, you would get like a deduction point, or in some cases, it can be um, a disqualification. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the main difference is um, no headshots are allowed in para Taekwondo. Yeah. In the Olympic style, if you punch, you would punch to score. Yeah. Um, in para Taekwondo, you can punch, but it's never really scored. It's just used as sort of to like break the distance, really. Yeah. Um, there are probably the two main differences from the rules. Um, yeah, and that's probably about it, really. Yeah, brilliant. So, obviously, you, you post videos of what your training looks like, and it looks pretty, <laughs> pretty intensive. But what does a typical day of training look like for you? Okay, so every day is so a Monday to Friday, the days that I would train. So you would wake up in the morning, Monday morning, you do a fasted weigh-in. And we also have an app where we would log our well-being for the day. So in the morning, um, I would say what my weight is, how I slept the night before, um, how I feel physically within myself. Yeah. I would then go to training. We will do between 20 to 30 minutes kick activation before we start any kicking session. Wow. Um, going to two hours of kicking, a break in between, which I would then go back um, to the academy. Um, athlete's um, accommodation, I'd have a shower, food, refuel, and then go back in the afternoon for a strength and conditioning session. So maybe, depends on what day it is, it would be weights or it would be um, a bike session or a running session. Yeah. Followed by um, recovery in the afternoon, which could be a sports massage. We've also got like recovery baths at the centre, so we could use those. Um, and that's probably a standard day for me, really. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Sounds a lot different to how squad training used to be. You know, yeah, it's a, it definitely is a lot different. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just I've got, I've got a lot of um, support staff and a lot of sort of aftercare, really. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm really looked after at the moment. Yeah, I think you and I both uh, have got a mutual acquaintance as well, you know, John Rochford. Yes, yeah, yeah. what a legend, what a yeah. man. He's amazing. Um, yeah, I did notice and I thought, mm, I wonder how they know each other. But, yeah, John, I've got a lot of time for that guy. Um, very good. Very yeah, good yeah, job. yeah. Yeah. For in case the audience are listening, they don't know who John Rochford is. He's a guy I trained as a sports therapist with. Sports therapist, just like a sports physio, basically. And mm -hmm. he's got this wealth of knowledge about anatomy, physiology, treatment, soft tissue massage. The guy's like a walking encyclopedia, and he's one of the you know most down to earth guys you could chat with as well. Yeah. So obviously that that all sounds quite quite intensive, and I'm I'm guessing as you approach an Olympic or a Paralympic cycle, it starts to ramp up a bit. 
obviously your the, the games have been postponed by a year because of COVID-19. So how has the postponement of the Tokyo Games affected your preparation? Um, to be honest, I expected that decision to be made. So I think I'd already sort of mentally sort of prepared for it. Yeah. Um, so the only way it's changed, my coaches and support staff have just altered the plans. So obviously we would have had competition schedule planned in training camps. And due to that, um, obviously not happening with current, um, you know, COVID-19, mm-hmm. that's just been adjusted. And we've just um, changed it to training back at the gym. Well, the majority of it was at home to start with. We are now back at centre. But yeah, that was just adjusted um, that way, really. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's cool. Um, so, as a Paralympic athlete, do you feel that um, Paralympic athletes get the same level of respect that they should be getting from the public compared to their Olympic counterparts? Or do you still think there's, there's a lot of room for improvement in that regard? Yeah, I think it has improved gradually. However, as a whole, I think the I think it's way behind. Mm-hmm. I don't think para athletes across the board get enough recognition. Um, I don't think they get respected as much as what Olympic athletes do. Um, I still get it to this day. It's um, oh yeah. So what about the normal taekwondo? When's the proper taekwondo happening? Do you know the real one? And I'm like, oh, okay, that's a bit offensive. Yeah. Um, so that term's used quite a lot and it doesn't really sit well with me because it just makes you feel like, oh, a bit inferior or yeah. like you, you're not as good. So that, that term sort of is a bit of um, a bugbear with me. Yeah. I, um, I don't think that para athletes get as much media coverage as what they can. And I know after like Paralympic Games, you know, coverage does improve, but I still feel like sponsorship opportunities, it's a lot more increased for Olympic athletes in comparison to the Paralympic athletes. So I yeah. think, um, yeah, there is a place for it to improve even further. Yeah, yeah, completely agree with that. That's that's always been my kind of interpretation of it as well, that it's always, like, there's been this big focus on the Olympic Games, and then once that's over, like, the Paralympic Games come afterwards, and it's like, oh, well, we'll watch it if we've got time or if it can be bothered or, yeah. you know, it, it's, you know... Not the not the real Olympics as people say, but it's ridiculous. You guys put just as much, if not more, effort in, you know. And it's almost like you've got something more to prove as well, you know. Yeah, I totally agree. That's another thing that does sort of annoy me a little bit because obviously Paralympics is called the Paralympics because it's meant to be parallel with the Olympic athletes. So the fact that it's two weeks later, it is like oh, it's a bit of an afterthought. We'll just chuck it in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do feel people who do have disabilities I think the fact that you can still perform to that world-class level when you've actually got something that's hindering you as well um, mm-hmm. I think it's amazing so I think it should be more recognition. Yeah yeah absolutely I mean I know firsthand just what you're capable of we used to go obviously we used to go TAGB squad training together and I remember you, this one time you did a tourney kick and the helmet literally flew to the other side of the... I did I can't <laughs> remember that <laughs> funny though. Yeah yeah no I remember that yeah. <laughs> um, so after the games next year, what what's next for you? Obviously, you've got this big preparation for Tokyo, but what's kind of on the horizon for you after that? Um, well, I'm imagining I'm going to have a gold medal around my neck, and I'll be doing a lot of celebrating. So I'll be probably taking time out to reflect on the competition, yeah. um, just celebrate with the people closest to me. Um, but there will be competitions scheduled um, that year, so I will be. Sh- probably have a week off at tops and then I'll be back training again um, for another major championships. But um, yeah, I am hoping I'm going to have a little bit of downtime and hopefully with a decent medal, I'll get more media opportunities, which are going to keep me really busy. And I can obviously promote Paratide one day more through the media and I don't know, maybe a little TV show. Who knows what um, I might get approached to do. So if it all goes well, I'll be spending a lot of time after the games doing that. Yeah, brilliant. So is this the first time um, para taekwondo has been actually at, at the, the Paralympic Games yes it is the first time which yeah is amazing so the first time taekwondo was in the Olympics it obviously demonstrated in 1988 but then it didn't go in as a full sport till 2000 mm-hmm. so now it took 20 years later for them then to introduce um, para taekwondo so yeah it will be making its debut in Tokyo yeah, yeah. So essentially, you have the opportunity to be the, the very first para taekwondo, you know, Paralympic champion in your weight division. And that's that's literally making history. 
you know. Uh, no, it's it's pretty crazy. The fact that I've qualified a spot that's pretty crazy in itself because para taekwondo was just oh this is amazing. We're doing competitions and now we've actually got a world class program in place. Yeah. Um, that's amazing within itself. So to medal would be yeah, it'd be perfect. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. No, that's, I mean that's amazing. Um, Aside from your Taekwondo, you do a lot of work to raise awareness of mental health, especially for military veterans. Um, can you just tell us a bit about why that is a cause that's close to your heart and, and what are some of the organisations that you support? Um, so I'm actually an ambassador for Broughton House, which is actually a care home for um, for veterans. So their aim is actually to create um, a veterans village. So it's going to be able to have a lot of ex-military or um personnel in there so the reason why I support that um charity is because all of my family have actually been in the military like mm -hmm. past and I've got quite a lot of got uncles cousins who are currently serving now so it's just quite personal to me really um I just feel yeah it's a very sort of mentally challenging job inside and when you actually leave and sometimes when um they do leave that environment they don't get the support they deserve mm -hmm. so I think raising awareness trying to fundraise as best as I can to support those people. I just feel quite passionate about and um, that's what I should be doing really. Yeah, no, that, that's brilliant. It really is. Um, if there are some young female listeners in the audience who might be inspired to start Taekwondo after they've been listening to you, but they're scared of getting started, what's some advice that you would give them? Well, loads of advice really. Um, if even if you're not interested in competing or you're not interested in sparring i just feel taekwondo is such like a versatile sport really i feel there's something for everybody of their age abilities there's something everyone can do and um, just by going along to taekwondo your confidence will improve you'll meet such um like you'll meet all characters from all walks of life that's like a definite um, and i think yeah it's very cliche but i think if um you don't have to be great to start but obviously you do have to start to be great so just give it a go and just try your best to enjoy it and I'm sure you'll get something out of it. Yeah no, that's fantastic advice very good. Um, before we finish could you just tell people where they can um, follow you on social media just to get a glimpse of what you're doing? Yeah so I've got I haven't actually got a separate athlete account I decided to keep it all in one so people know the real Amy and the athlete Amy so it's just on Instagram with um I think it's Amy Treesdale, Treesdale Amy on Instagram, and I've also got the same on Facebook, the same name, Facebook and Instagram yeah. and Twitter. So, yeah, all my videos, Dave and Athlete, those are posted up on there if anyone wants to check it out. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, I'll post links to those as well in the captions and description box on YouTube and that. But, um, no problem. Yeah, Amy, that was a brilliant interview, um, giving no us problem. some great insights. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much for your time and, and no best problem. of luck for, uh, for Tokyo. Looking forward Thanks to it. Thanks very much. Yeah. All right, Emmy. Take it easy. Thank you. Bye. Bye.